Hello Virtual Doll Convention, it's Rachel and I am back with our program, our first program of the day with Bradley Justice and he is going to teach us some wonderful tips, a workshop tutorial on how to identify early Barbie with several examples. He also has a wonderful assistant. So we're going to turn the camera around and get started with the great Bradley Justice here live at Virtual doll convention hello hi it's so great to be here at virtual doll convention rachel i'm excited to be sharing my love and knowledge of barbie with you so um a lot of the times i have questions because people who get an early ponytail barbie or a barbie in a black and white swimsuit they think they have the original barbie so there's a lot of questions on how to tell the difference between a number one a number three and number four. So I'm gonna go through some of the earliest examples of Barbie and tell you about the little telltale, little subtle things that you can see to identify these early dolls. Yeah. So this is a beautiful number one Barbie. And the classic face on this is these arched eyebrows, the black and white painted eyes. There's no color to the iris. The red lipstick. She has the soft bangs. She's on a solid body, so she's kind of heavy. These usually turn pale. When you compare it to some of these later ones, you see how pale it is. And the telltale thing for a number one Barbie is this, the holes in the feet. These were designed for a special posing stand that had prongs that the doll would rest on. So that is the details of the number one Barbie. Also on her butt markings, it'll be Barbie followed by the letters TM, which stands for trademark. And the earlier dolls are TM dolls um, later dolls will have the R in the circle for registered trademark. So this is a number one. Now, not long after this doll came out, the posing stand proved to be a little too difficult to use and too expensive to produce. So they eliminated that posing stand with the prongs. So thus, the doll no longer had the holes in the feet. So a number two doll is essentially the same doll, but she won't have the holes in the feet. That's so interesting that it's essentially the same doll, the number two, except for the holes. I bet they get confused pretty often. They do. They do. A lot of times, um, you know, people think, well, maybe my doll's not worth as much. It doesn't have the holes in the feet. But a number two is just as valuable as a number, um, as really? number one. Yeah. Do people ever so, drill holes into the number twos? Unfortunately, there's always some unscrupulous people that will do anything to make a time. And there's a few people that sell on eBay and kind of take advantage of collectors, repainting faces, drilling holes in feet. So if you're uncertain about a doll or you feel uneasy about it, get a Barbie collector friend to take a look at it and give you a second opinion or always err on the side of caution. I would always go to a trusted dealer or you know, hope to find one out of the right. attic. So that's what I would do. So, so we'll move along to the third Barbie. So this is a number three Barbie. Once again, you have this pale skin tone She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. This one has made maintained some of her peachy coloring. But um, number threes have brown eyeliner. Some of them do have blue. So that's something that you can help to identify a number three. And ones, twos, threes, and fours only came in blonde and the brunette hair color. So um, she has essentially sometimes the same markings as the number one with the TM mm -hmm. next to the Barbie name on the back. Once again, the red lipstick. She's a be she's beautiful, and her face is so much different from it's, the number ones and twos. Softer. She has the blue yeah. eye color. Mm -hmm. And the other telltale thing with ones, twos, and threes, <laughs> that's kind of a weird thing. That I don't know who originally discovered this, is this. It smells like crayon. <laughs> They're loving your poochie dress, by the way, Billy Harris. Yes. Crayola, number three. Yeah. Snow White. So, um, so this is the number three. She is lovely. Now, we're going to move into the number four, and this is an example of a number four. The thing that the ones, twos, threes, and fours all share is they're what we call solid torso. The doll is entirely rotational cast vinyl. So the torso is heavy. And when you touch the back of the doll, it's kind of like a thud. Interesting. Where if you get one of the later dolls, this is a number five. Oh, that's it's, it's hollow. completely different. It's hollow, which is blown, it's blown vinyl. So it's a different. So number four, 
Looks a lot like a number three. You're going to have blue eyeliner. This doll isn't in the best of condition, but this is in part of that haul that, we, yes. <laughs> that we've that we been going through and having fun with. Um, so the thing that kind of differentiates the number four from the number three is they maintain their their tan skin tone. So um, they, they stay tan. The other thing the earlier dolls possess, which is sometimes not seen, um, this one has had a horrible haircut, but underneath <laughs> the ponytail... It's flocked. Oh so, my gosh, interesting. So the the this one there's a four. So someone cut her hair off, but you can still see the flocking. So this is a number five. And you can see underneath her ponytail, <gasps> there's nothing. And that had to be really kind of disappointing to a little girl that got a Barbie and then decided to take her ponytail down to yes. see that she was sort of bald underneath. Oh, so, that is I had no idea. That is so interesting. So these the these are fours. So once again, the solid torso. The, the more tan skin tone, blonde or brunette. So we'll move, move into the number fives. Now the number fives have the hollow body. The Barbie marking on the butt has now got the R next to the name for the registered trademark. And then the, the easiest way to just to look at the doll and her face and see is to look at the bangs. The earlier dolls have these soft curly bangs. It's made of the same gauge fine saran as the as the ponytail. The later ones have a firmer um, and more stiff bang that was rooted and curled. So it's just a different material. The other thing about number fives is they sort of get greasy and that's because the plasticizer that makes up the vinyl is sort of leaching out. So you get this sort of like oily complexion. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see on this one the shine. It will clean off, but even if it cleans off, it does come back. So it's just nature of the beast with these 1961 era dolls for for Barbie. This is a, a pretty example. She's got some lip rubs, but she still has that firm curl and original hair set. So she's just a wonderful doll. She is a wonderful doll, and uh, is there something, what's going on with her lips? Have the they lips, been retouched? These are original, um, but what is happening here is the lip paint is has rubbed off the top okay. and the lower. Okay. So it kind of gives her sort of a, a weird little thing. That's something that could be easily touched up. And sometimes collectors don't mind doing that. Sometimes it's sort of a fatal flaw for some people. If you're a pristine mint collector, she wouldn't be the doll for you. Bradley, just out of curiosity, do, you, do you, what is your favorite ones, fives, twos? Um, for me, I, for you. I love ones. I love ones because it's the original, right? But I love threes because it's that soft sort of classic sort of look. So yeah. it's, it's a, it's a sort of a toss up. But you know, like this doll with this peachy complexion and the black hair, you know, it's pretty to how die. Can you not yeah, fall in love with her, so. right? Yeah, so she's wonderful. Very now classic. they say that they're not color fast. So I'm gonna pull down her top, you know, and kind of, and you can kind of see where it has. You can see where it faded up here. So you see the variance where it was covered, and then when it was not. So, but she's a wonderful, wonderful doll. Wonderful doll. There are so you have taught us just just so far in this program so many ways that we can easily help navigate between a one, two, three, four, and five. Well, now we're going to talk about a number six. So this gets a little more confusing. And some people say that there's, you know, number one through seven. Some people would say there's nines. Once you kind of get to this era, there are subtle differences that some collectors have been able to pinpoint that this was 1962, this was 63. What I considered a number six or a ponytail, as we kind of did, is from 63 on, the dolls came like in a red swimsuit. They have the firm texture bangs. They came in a lot of hair colors. Um, redhead, which they called Titian. Blonde, um, um, ash blonde, platinum, um, brunette. Lots of different colors. But the thing that's kind of interesting to kind of differentiate her from a number five is on her butt markings. That body will also have Midge's name. Midge, TM, Barbie with an R in a circle. And that indicates that they're, they've redone the mold, and so it's sharing with Midge. So that's from the, like, 1963 era. So interesting. And because Barbie was so successful, so popular, so everything, Mattel, over the course of history, has decided to give collectors um, sort of a treasure and reproduce some of these earlier dolls. So, um, unfortunately, 
once these dolls are out of the box and thrown into a box of other dolls, people can easily get confused. Mm -hmm. So this is a replica number one Barbie from the 35th anniversary. And I'm just going to point out a few details that are just going to show that there's a big difference between her and a, a real number one. And we have our lovely assistant. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> so the doll sort of maintains this pinky skin tone. She has a lot of hair. And it's just a different... Wow. Different, oh, it's so different, different when you get them next to the, each other. The bangs are not curly. They're just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, just like a, a single curl. Um, the fingers are not divided like on these other dolls where you can see the fingers are divided. Oh, that's a huge difference. You see these seams in the top of her leg, which these were polished off, so you don't see that. Then the other thing, you see they have holes in the feet. Oh, goodness. They did do that. But... These are lined with metal tubing, and these are not. The other thing that is, to me, the ultimate be-all, end-all is this doll is marked on the back of her head, and none of the early dolls are. That but helps it has, a ton. But it has the date, 1958, mm. which um, is the year that Barbie was you know, copyrighted or patented. And then on, the, on her back here, she has the Barbie marking. Which looks very modern. It does look very modern because if you compare it to one of these more vintage dolls, you see they're marked on the on the on butt the cheek. behind. Yes. Oh, so 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 good, Bradley. This is so good. So, and they just have a different feel to right. them. They're just you know, they're great. They're fun to play with and good travel and a, dolls. Yeah, fun thing to have if you're um, you know nostalgic for your childhood doll. But there's a big difference, not only in detail but in price. So, right. Right. So you can you can definitely start somewhere and it's important for collectors to understand and know what a number one looks like and what to look for because these pop up in thrift stores and they at do. garage sales. One of my favorite finds was essentially a doll just like this one at a thrift store in North Carolina for a dollar. Did you find it? I did. It was you. It was me. Oh my gosh. So, How that amazing. Was, that was a treasure. That doll is still in my collection. So, I mean, I kind of think sometimes some things like that happen that was just meant to be, and you have to hang on to those things. Absolutely you do. It's absolutely meant to be. We have been, if you guys are just tuning in, we are here live at the virtual doll convention with Bradley Justice and Billy Harris, and we are learning all about Barbies right now. Bradley, for you, here you are at a virtual convention. What are some of the things that Barbie, with armed with your love of Barbie, you have been able to do? Oh my gosh, you know, Barbie has afforded me to travel to all kinds of cities all over the world, not only attending con conventions, the real conventions um, in person, but shows and traveling to see people's collections. I've met people all over the country. Some of my dearest friends are mm -hmm. all over, so getting to visit them and see their collections. And um, this past fall, I was in Paris, and um, Barbie helped pay for it. So Absolutely. it's a fun thing to, to get to to do all the things that I get to do, and it's kind of thanks to Barbie. So. Absolutely. And Bradley, what are some of the services that you offer in Barbie world? Well, I do deal. I, mm -hmm. I'm a seller on eBay, and um, I um, used to have a brick-and-mortar store called the Swell Doll Shop. It is no more, but I am still very active, a very active seller. So you can find me on Facebook at the Swell Doll Shop. And um, so I, I sell, I have an Etsy site, so, and I do a lot of shows, and usually mm -hmm. I can be found with Billy Harris wherever she's doing a show, because we're kind of partners in crime, but yes, we, we, we um, get to travel and have fun with Barbie and enjoy meeting other collectors and yeah, just having fun with Barbie. Absolutely, and Bradley, you are also, um, you, you do appraisal work, and you help people, yeah. uh, if, if they are needing um, assistance, either buying or selling, you you, you offer, right. I've you have a, a service. Of, I have a lot of friends and a lot of people that I don't know that were sent to me and said, I'm thinking about buying this Barbie. Is it worth it? Is, is this a number one? Is this a number two? And I recently had um, someone contact me, and I drove two hours to meet with her, and she pulled out the doll that she just purchased on eBay, and it was fake. Someone right. had defrauded her. And it's one thing when someone repaints a doll to look like a number one just for their own personal benefit, or, or repaints it and says, hey, look, you know, this doll looks like a number one, and you know, you know that it's a number four that's been repainted or something. It's, that's, that is something that we do for a doll that's really damaged. You know, it kind of gives it a second life. But when you're doing something to defraud someone, it's, you know, it's right. awful. And um, 
And, and we need to help each other in the community when we see those things happen. Exactly. And we're not talking about this to scare anybody. We want people to be buying Barbies, Absolutely. but you just have to. <laughs> but and, but programs like this help with the knowledge to be able to make informed decisions. Well, the one thing I've always said is knowledge is power. And mm -hmm. I started collecting vintage Barbie at age 11. And one of the first things I did with my allowance money was buy a, a book called the Encyclopedia of, of Barbie. It was written by Sybil DeWine and Joan Ashebraner. And they were some of the original pioneers in the collector world. That book was written, I think, in 1976. And I still refer to it all the time. As an 11-year-old, as an I pretty much memorized it cover to cover. And it helped me identify a lot of things and have an understanding for these dolls. One other tidbit that I would let you know with all of these early dolls, they were all made in Japan. That's where they had set up their production. Um, so long, usually on the foot, it's going to say Japan. The earlier dolls, it'll be like in a rectangle on the their foot. But there we this go. One, there it is right there. There we go. Perfect. Yep, we can see that loud and clear. So, it, you know, knowledge, you know, just having the power and the knowledge, you know, it's going to give you a sense of being comfortable with your purchases. It's going to give you um, the freedom to say yes or to say no. So I, I think anytime you can learn more, um, you can study more, that's just part of being a collector. Absolutely. We're going to get up close here so we can see the faces again as we are looking at these. Knowledge really is power and to be able to identify and just have some tools that off the top of off, off the cuff we would be able to make some decisions. It helps so much. Here we go. So you Why guys... didn't they make a new body each year? Well, Great um, question. The body was pretty much standard, and so what they did was keep the body the same. So the fashions would be new, the fashions would come out, and the fashions would always fit. So bodies, Barbie's body stayed the same until 1998, and then she got a new body. A little bit thicker waist, smaller bust, um, and it was just more or less because we were built differently and dressed differently in 1950s and 60s than we did in 1998. So it was just a different, different world. How phenomenal. So Bradley, what can we look forward to uh, in your upcoming programs today? Well, my next program that I'm going to be doing is um, all about fashion and how Barbie evolved and how her fashion evolved and how it was created. So we're going to get to take a few looks at some, some interesting things and and learn about the history of the fashion. And then we have another little surprise later this afternoon um, because we're gonna go through some of the treasures that we discovered in that mountain of Barbie sock. Um, we found some really, really, really exciting things. Um, as I said, I've collected since I was 11, so I always like to think that I've seen it all, had it all or whatever, so it always amazes me when I find something that I haven't had or haven't seen. And, um, and we're gonna get to see some of that today. Wonderful. So we hope that that program was uh, great for you. You learned some Barbie stuff, learned how to identify some Barbies and just some telltale signs. So when you're out and about and maybe you find something, you can help identify it. So that was the wonderful Bradley Justice. And we hope you guys enjoyed that program. And we're going to be back on in just a few minutes with our next one. We'll see you guys soon.